So now we're going to take a look at uh, combinations and permutations, and we're also going to learn about factorial, how to do a factorial, factorial in math. And uh, we'll see that. And we're going to start out with combinations, and in the next video we'll get to permutations. But again, this helps us figure out our sample space. And so again, just remember we have in our experiment, and our experiment will produce outcomes. All of the possible outcomes is our sample space. And then an event is a collection of sample points. It's a subset of the sample space. And, uh, and so that's the terminology there. And the, being able to look at the number of possible combinations of something. So in the previous one, we said, hey, what if we have multiple steps? And here, what we're going to look at is what if we have multiple combinations? So the example that's given in the textbook, which I like, is you have five parts and you're choosing two of them. What is our sample space? What are the total combinations we have if we have five parts? So let's get a visual on that first. And to get a visual on that, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to a spreadsheet. And I have five different parts. So let's just zoom in on this. We'll make this 200%. And we'll say parts. And we have part uh, A, B, C, B, C, uh, D, E, so we have five different parts. So I'm just going to grab all these and just bring them in a little bit. And so what are the different combinations of parts that we might have? And these all need to be expanded just a little bit more. And we'll get all of them this way and we'll do all of them. Here we go like that. Make them all a little bit smaller. Go smaller. Go smaller. Here we go. Make them all smaller this way. And that looks all right. So the different combinations, 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 combinations. We could have AB, we could have AB, we could have AC, we could have AD, we could have AE, we could have uh, BC, BC, we could have BD, we could have BE, we could have CD, we could have CE, uh, we could have DE. And let's see how many that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 different combinations, 10 different combinations, right? To illustrate that with permutations, 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 uh, we could have all these, boop, 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 boop. And I'm just gonna like make these a slightly different color and we'll make those like, I don't know, pink and bold. Pink's kind of hard to see. Uh, if you make it that way, we'll make it like a dark blue. There we go. So with permutations, we could have AB, and we could also have BA, and we could also have CA, and we could also have DA, and we could also have EA, and we could also have CB, and we could also have DB, and we could also have EB, and we could also have DC, and we could also have CE, and we could also have ED. Oh, sorry, this should be EC. EC here, and that's DC. So... In combinations, order doesn't matter. In permutations, permutation of AB is BA. In permutations, uh, order matters. Okay, so we're gonna just add that here to the end of permutations, and we'll put order, order matters. Okay, the order matters uh, that they come in. And so knowing how to calculate combinations, and if you look over here at combinations, you can see permutations, order, of selection matters, uh, but combinations, the order doesn't matter. So if you're selecting two out of five parts, here are the different combinations. Why does this matter? Because it helps us figure out our sample space, right? We wanna figure out what is our sample space, uh, you know, for uh, all the possible outcomes, all the possible combinations, all the possible permutations. What is the sample space? And when we know our sample space, we could then like, you know, do some experiments, get some outcomes. We could start to determine probability and then we could define an event. The event is gonna be some subset of the sample space, could be all of the sample space. And we could assign the probability of, you know, a certain outcome occurring, right? So if this event occurs, we get a certain outcome and we can say the probability of that is a certain thing. And we could determine that probability based upon empirical historical data that we, you know, got from our experiment. We have that empirical stuff. And then we also have, let me just find it in ChatGPT to show it to you so you get a visual on it. 
We have the case where like all the outcomes are equally likely. All the outcomes are equally likely. So that's just like theoretical. We're just gonna say, hey, all the outcomes are equally likely, like tossing a coin or rolling a dice. Uh, and if we wanted to say that about this example here, we'd say, hey, all these outcomes are equally likely. So that's how we can assign the probability to it. Or we can look at the data from doing a whole bunch of experiments and the law of large numbers and you know get it, whether you call it empirical or experimental or whatever the textbook called it. The textbook called it. Uh, the textbook called it. This is the sheet. The textbook called it relative frequency, right? So whatever you call it, we could base it upon the data of a bunch of empirical experiments, uh, the frequency that came from that. Or we could just subjectively assign the probability but we get the sample space, and once we have the sample space, once we have the sample space, right, we could run an experiment, we could see what the outcomes are, we could start to get probability, we could define an event. So that's how it's all working, how it's all connected together. But what we really wanna figure out here is like, how do we figure out the size of the sample space? When we have different combinations, how do we figure out the size of uh, sample space when we have different permutations? And so to do that, we use these formulas here. And to do that, you have to understand uh, factorial. So we're gonna go to statistics and in, or go to ChatGPT. And in ChatGPT, I've already asked it about combination, combinations and permutations. We'll see that in, in a minute, but we're gonna ask it now, can you please uh, explain factorials, factorial to me and provide me with a simple example? There we go. And so explanation of factorial, the factorial of a non-negative integer n is devoted by n factorial is the product of all positive integers from one up to n. Factorials are commonly used in permutations, combinations, and other areas of mathematics and statistics where counting the number of arrangements or selections is required. So the mathematical definition is n factorial, which is n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to two, all the way down to one. A special case is that zero factorial is equal to one just because if you go all the way to zero, it just makes everything zero. <laughs> so they say if you have zero factorial, that's one. That's useful in various mathematical situations. So five factorial would be five, four, three, two, one, right? Five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two is 120, times one is 120. So five factorial equals 120. So that's how factorial works. So now that we know that, we could calculate a uh, combination using this here. So a combination, if we come back and look at our spreadsheet, let's bring that up and then we'll bring this formula over to the side right there. And actually, let's put this one on the side so we have it like this and then we have them side by side. So for a combination, I'm just gonna control C this and put it down here. And the formula for a combination is going to be equal to n factorial so n factorial is going to be, n is the number of parts, that's five. So it's gonna be five times four times three times two times one. And we, once we have that, we're gonna divide that by a small n factorial. So that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be uh, two, two times one, cause we're doing like, what is the small, we want two, the small number. And ChatGPT referred to that small n as r, uh, but the textbook uses n. So again, you know, think about the principle here and not necessarily the notation, but we're selecting two out of the five parts. So my five is this big N and my two is my little N. So two times one is two factorial. And then we're gonna multiply that uh, and we'll do, do it like this. And I need to come up here to do that actually then. I'm gonna do another one like that. And, uh, and then it made it all really small. And now I'm gonna multiply that uh, so two factorial times five minus two, which is three, and we'll make that factorial, three times two times one. And so let's just make sure I've got the right number of parentheses there. So two factorial times, uh, and then this one needs to have a parenthesis right there, times three times two times one factorial is that. And when I do all that, I should get 10. Yay, so that's combinations. And that's how I calculate combinations. I'm gonna delete that row. And I'm gonna copy all this, control C, and I'm gonna put it right here. And for permutations, control C, copy that, put that here. Uh, I'm gonna go into formula view and then stretch this out so I could see all my formulas. 
And so for permutations, it's just like combinations, but you take out this little n factorial right there. And you do not need to understand like how this formula works, right? You don't have to like have a high level understanding of the formula. You just need to be able to use it. Like you want to know like the number of combinations for your sample space when you're selecting two out of five parts, use the combinations formula. You want to know the number of permutations when the order matters when you're selecting two out of five parts, uh, use the permutations formula. So with that formula there, I should have 20, and that's what I, what I have. So that's, uh, that's how you determine your sample space, the size of your sample space for combinations and permutations when you're selecting a certain amount out of a larger amount. And again, we're determining our sample space because this is the size of our sample space because this is all part of you know, doing probability in statistics. We have an experiment, every experiment has an outcome, all the possible outcomes is a sample space. Once we gather some data on that, right, we'll be able to say, hey, here is the experimental empirical relative frequency of these different uh, sample points occurring in our sample space, these different outcomes. And then we could define an event, which is some subset of the sample space, and we could determine the probability of that event. And so all these things that we've just learned about multiple steps, combinations and permutations all help us determine our sample space. That all helps us do our probability here. All right, so that's how you do uh, combinations and permutations.